Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. So we have infinite nested radicals on both sides and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. My first method involves setting the left hand side equal to a variable. Say y and don't ask why. Now we're going to go ahead and square both sides here. My goal is to solve for x in terms of y. And we've done this before, but I'm going to repeat that just in case you haven't seen this approach. So if you square both sides, obviously the outermost radical, the square root sign, is going to disappear. And the right-hand side is going to give us y squared. Now notice that these infinite radicals are nested radicals and they contain themselves. So the expression that I come across here, this is the same thing as y. So we get the following, x plus y equals y squared. And I can safely say that x equals y squared minus y from here. But that's not the goal. That is true. That's not false. But I'm trying to solve for y here. So that's not my goal. Let's forget about that. And solve for y here. How can you solve for y? y squared means this is a quadratic equation. Yay, quadratic equations are awesome. And remember, recently we solved a cubic equation using a parametric uh, equation idea. That was the first method. And uh, this is a similar idea. So we're solving for y in terms of a parameter x, so that for different values of x, uh, we get a family of solutions. Okay, great. So y equals from here negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, but c is negative x, so that's going to become positive 4x all over 2a, which is 2. That is the quadratic formula. And now we get two solutions, and we don't like that, because this is like a, I mean, it should be definite, right? Uh, definitely this converges, and it should have a definite value in terms of x. But uh, how do we distinguish between these two solutions? One of them is not going to work. One thing we probably forgot to mention here, when we set this expression equal to y, we had to say that y is greater than 0. Obviously, x is positive in this case, even though we didn't mention that. Let's just say it right now. x is positive. If x is positive, then this quantity is also positive. I think for negative uh, values of x, this is also well defined. But think about it like if x is, I think, greater than negative 1 fourth or something like that. Anyways, um, we're going we're gonna to uh, figure this out. So y is equal to this. And since y, we want y to be positive, square root of 1 plus 4x for positive values of x, uh, this is going to be greater than 1. And if this is greater than 1, then 1 minus that is going to be negative. So we don't want that. So therefore, we're going to use the, the plus sign here only. That gives us a single solution for y. So that's good because the left-hand side now I have in terms of x. So I can set it equal to the right-hand side. The right-hand side of my original equation is square root of x times the square root of x times the square root of x dot dot dot. And now this is equal to 1 plus the square root of uh, 1 plus 4x divided by 2, which is the same as y. Okay? Great. Now, what are we going to do with this? We're going to square both sides. So let's go ahead and square both sides. And that gives us something nicer. x times the square root of x times the square root of x dot 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 is going to give us the square, uh, this quantity squared. Let's leave it at that for now. I don't want to simplify it because uh, things are going to simplify. Now notice that this was equal to the right hand side uh, without the square. So we can safely say that x times, this is equal to x times uh, 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4x divided by 2. By the way, this is y and the right hand side is y squared. Great. So you can say, also say that x equals y, but that's another story. So now I'm going to set it equal to this. But that is squared. Now notice that 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4x uh, cannot equal 0 because that would indicate that this radical equals negative 1. So we can basically divide both sides by that. And that gives us something real cool. We can go ahead and simplify this, like take one of these out. And now we have a simpler equation. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. This equals x. And then we can cross multiply and square both sides. Let's go ahead and do it. If you square both sides, but before we square both sides, should we subtract one? 
And then let's square both sides now. And now we get a quadratic on the right hand side, but don't worry. It's going to simplify a great deal because we have one on both sides. Now, we can go ahead and cancel out the one and turn this into a quadratic. Uh, put the 4x on the right hand side and write it as this. Now, this is factorable. Obviously, x does not equal 0. Therefore, x equals 2. And remember, we were trying to solve for x and we got the x value uh, by doing this. So x equals 2. The answer is 2. Make sense? Hopefully it does. And you can go ahead and plug it in 2 like 2. 4 times 2 equals 9. I mean, 4 times 2 equals 9. Great. Awesome. Good job. 4 times 2 plus 1 equals 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 by, by 2 equals 2. So it works. You can also plug it into the original one and you'll see that it works. Okay, great. So x equals 2 is the answer. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Obviously, my second method is less painful and hopefully more elegant. You'll decide about that. All right, great. Now, my second method involves setting the right-hand side equal to y. I mean, it's the same thing, but kind of like a different approach, right? Sort of. So if you set the right-hand side equal to y, and forget about the left-hand side for now, let's just go ahead and rewrite it. And now I'm going to square both sides. Notice that I'm not really dealing with the left-hand side until I get something real simple. And then I get the following. And remember, we set this equal to y. So we get something like xy equals y squared. Don't just dismiss the y yet. Let's go ahead and put these on the same side. If you're solving equations, never cancel things out. Always use factoring. All right, great. So now from here, we get y times x minus y. Well, I use the same variable, but you get the idea. I could also use a different variable instead of the y, but anyways, it doesn't matter. So from here, remember, our goal is to uh, solve for x in terms of y. So from here, we get x equals y or y equals x. So y equals x, that means the right-hand side equals x. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, explain what that means. So we have square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x plus dot, dot, dot. Remember, this was equal to the right-hand side, which was equal to y, and y turns out to be x. Therefore, this equals x. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and square both sides, and or you can do the following without squaring both sides. Notice that this is the same thing as the right-hand side or the left-hand side, which is x. From here, we get square root of 2x equals x, which means x squared equals 2x, and x equals 0 or x equals 2. But x equals 0 obviously is not going to work. I mean, if x is 0, obviously it's 0. 0 is going to work, but why did I say that? Let's take a look at the original problem. I always dismiss 0 because I said x is positive. If x is not positive, then definitely x equals 0 is a valid, valid solution. Okay, let me just say that. So now... Uh, we get uh, the result x equals 2 and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye